you want to rewind with me? We're going to go back in time and we're going to talk about episode 1, season 47 of Saturday Night Live with Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson. That's the episode. So, we've got the cold open. We got Jadge. We're being introduced to Jadge, James Austin Johnson, uh, Cecily Strong, A.D. Bryant, Ego, Melissa, uh, uh, Pete as Cuomo. Uh, and it was good. I liked it. I liked it. I gave him a nine. It was not necessarily, it wasn't hilarious, but everyone was on beat. Everyone was bouncing off of each other. It was pretty good. So I gave it a nine. Then we've got to the monologue, uh, which is okay. It was funny. It was, it wasn't anything exceptional. It wasn't anything that was necessarily hilarious. It was more adorable and endearing rather than anything else. So I liked it. I liked it. It was good, but I gave it a seven. There wasn't anything really to comment about. There wasn't any jokes that really got me like, ha, 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 you know. It was relatable. So, and it basically, in the first episode, you want to set the tone. You want to bring, you're welcoming people back. You're bringing people in. And I think it did the job. But I, I would have liked to see more jokes. So, rather than space in between and, um, just a lot of thinking jokes, a lot of jokes that you really like the numbers and stuff like that. It was just, uh, it was just a little too long, a little too cerebral. Um, then we've got uh, the talking, which is the view. Um, and I thought it was funny. It was, again, it was okay funny. It wasn't necessarily anything exciting. Um, there wasn't anything that was just really, really funny. I've seen, I think, the, the episode three times already. And... It just, there wasn't anything that necessarily grabbed me. Uh, one of the funniest things was Aidy and her husband, and maybe the ladies arguing, but I think that it could have gone even further or elevated even more other than the diagnosis and whatnot. The diagnosis at the end was reasonably funny, but it just, I wasn't laughing. Then we got Amazon in space. Ugh, I gave it a three, and then plus one for guest appearance. Um, so four, but it just, there wasn't, I think the best thing out of it was Kyle. Uh, the best thing was Kyle as uh, Branson. So, uh, yeah, not Kyle. It was Alex, Alex Moffat as uh, as Branson, and I liked it. I actually think that uh, Bowen should consider playing uh, Elon Musk rather than Mikey Day, just because of the eyes and the makeup and stuff like that. Uh, I think that Bowen might be able to, to do well with that. Try it out, see what happens. Then we've got, um, so I give them a four. There wasn't a lot of jokes. It was just, a, yeah, the jokes about, you know, the thing and the penis and whatnot. But it just, I don't know. It just didn't resonate for me. Then we've got uh, Cars 4, which is sexualizing a kid's cartoon. So I gave them a four, another four. It just, I didn't feel that it was, it was good to sexualize a kid's cartoons to put it in that genre. I think you could darken it and you can make it different, but you don't have to include sex in it. I think, you know, other elements, it's just you playing with an interesting, with a weird, interesting line, and I just didn't go for it. Uh, this, the school board meeting was hilarious. It was pretty funny. I give them a nine. I think um, just between intervals of switch, I think it could have been a little bit tighter. Uh, everyone was on point, though, and everyone was hilarious and, and pretty funny. Uh, I think some of the lines... Uh, of the slower characters could have been picked up a little bit more. So just smidgets of, of fidgeting would have made it a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. Uh, then we've got Weekend Update. So with Weekend Update, is that, yeah, is that where we're going? we got Weekend Update. Then we got Weekend Update. The jokes that popped into my head were Needles, Joe Rogan, Streaming Audience, Catholic... Uh, uh, and so that was, the, the first half was okay. Second half was a lot funnier and I'm basing it after black woman missing black woman missing black woman was an absolute 10 on ego is an icon ego is a genius on beat on point everyone right after the other I mean when you give that amazing icon a monologue like that it's just it's just hilarious it's just it was just I know when it came out I sent it to all my friends it's like you gotta check this out so um so then then she got jokes on jokes so that was really like 
you know, that's when you know you've got a genius going on because you've got jokes on jokes layered on top of each other. And then you can go back and be like, wait a second. And I've seen it quite a few times. So I can still like there was a joke about Colin Jones in the, in the obituary line that I didn't catch earlier. So it's one of those things that really lasts a sense of time. Um, Pete Davidson was pretty funny. I, for me, Pete Davidson can be a hit and a miss. I think that uh, Pete Davidson making fun of himself, I gave Ego a 10, uh, making fun of himself and, and Tilda Swinton and all those things were an 8. I like I like that element. Um, and then the tribute to Norm was beautiful. I didn't rate that, but I, of course, I mean, Norm held the show by himself, you know, the, the weekend update by himself. So that was, that's got to take some like really high elevated, you know, chops to be able to do that. And he did that, and so that's that's really kudos to an amazing, amazing human being that just graced the planet with such beautiful soul. So, um, you know, it, uh, but overall, the show I gave them an eight. I added every, everything up together. Weekend Update wasn't necessarily as funny as I'd like them to be, so I gave them a seven. So seven, ten, eight, all together, eight together. Uh, Miriam Lewis, I think that. It took a while for us to get to the jokes. A lot of the jokes just weren't there. A lot of the people didn't really resonate. A lot of it was held up with the pictures and then the other people. And it was just a little like, eh. I mean, it, it was nice that it was, eh, but it could have gone a lot faster, a lot quicker. Uh, the reveal at the end was pretty funny. <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, but overall, it wasn't as meaty and juicy. And, and, and a lot of the pace. Pace was one of the things that, was the biggest complaint about this particular episode. So I give them a six. Then we've got NFL in the crazy house. That was pretty funny. And I'm not, you know, about me and the NFL. Uh, visceral hatred. Uh, so <laughs> uh, because of the racism element. Um, and just how it uh, evocates slavery. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> and then let's not talk about the... <laughs> The sacrifice of the children to the high school football. <laughs> oh, we won't talk about that, right? Um. Anyway, anyway, back to the show. NFL Crazy House was pretty funny. I was, I think that again, it could have been a lot tighter, a lot cleaner, uh, in order to get a lot of those jokes out. So I thought it was, it was pretty good. Then we go into one of my favorites, poop. I've seen poop a few times. Uh, <laughs> and initially, I was, I don't, I mean, I'm like. Mm, that's okay. You can keep that in the toilet. All those kind of humors. But this was iconic. This was just beautiful. I think that they could totally take these two characters and just bring them into something else and into some, some other element. And people would be like, yeah, I know. Those are those people. But still, it totally works. <laughs> You know, it just totally, totally works. It's like the earrings thing with Jennifer Lopez and a few other people. Um, so I hope that they return those kind of characters, bringing Chris in at the end. It was just hilarious. Uh, I do think that a lot of the intervals could be a lot, a little bit tighter, a, lot, a little bit quicker. But overall, they were an absolute 10. So, yeah, that was just <laughs> an absolute 10. Just them two just totally knocked it out of the park. So overall, we've got uh, 72. I believe that's the score. I'm going to double check it because I just only did math really quickly. But I would believe we've got a 72, which is a C minus. So we're getting a lot of Cs. Uh, I believe there was maybe one B up there so far. And so I, I, a couple of things that I've been thinking about is that a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people say, yeah, L, and it's, SNL sucks. A lot of people say it. They try to either, they either, whether it's the older generation and they compare it to the much, much older, you know, Gilda Radner originals, uh, Chevy Chase, all those, that element, or whether it's people that compare it to Amy Poehler, Seth Meyers, um, Jimmy Fallon, uh, Tina Fey, when Tina Fey was the writer, uh, that, that era. And, and so there's those, so people are comparing it to those two and, and so that's where we're getting the C's, you know, that's where we're getting this. I, I don't know what is missing. I, I think that division has definitely pushed people aside on each side. There's been a too many, way too many duds from SNL for people that have, that has kind of pushed people away. Um, and just 
you know, Republicans, people on the left side, they've just been like, ah, you know, has SNL always been, has been political, but I think that there's different elements. Maybe it's a lot more personal for people right now. I don't know, but I do believe that my notes are helping. So I hope that SNL can take this and, and, and go with it and grow from it. And if you'd like to hire me, more than available. I also know jokes, and I write jokes as well. I'm a comedian. <laughs> Here's a free one, by the way. We, uh, we get, First of all, anything that is with Warner Brothers or that family needs to automatically get to the top of the list because that's a free commercial for the entire branding. You want to navigate people towards your house. That's my thought about it. So you, in that family, you've got the weakest link. I think that a lot of us are still kind of maybe grieving over uh, with the Jeopardy, um, Alex Trebek. So, uh, and um, Maya and Bialik has not really gotten her sea legs yet so that we know, you know, we can make fun of her. But I do think that the weakest link, which is in the family of NBC, and a joke that makes fun of the people could really be a joke that they could totally go run with. Similar to the element of, of Jeopardy, but what you do is now you have a bigger broad. And basically the comedy is not the person is not Jane Lynch. The comedy is the contestants and the bizarre, outlandish, off the wall, hilarious. Just drop, you know, bring cats in that white cat that I adore so much. Bring just random randomness to the. Because <laughs> I've been stream streaming some weakest link, and there's some answers where I'm like, she's standing right in front of you. <laughs> she is the answer, and she's standing right in front of you. <laughs> when you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know the name of the host of the show, <laughs> she's standing, that's the answer. <laughs> There's those moments in the week, it's like, and, I, and it's a fun show. And so I do think, <laughs> and just when they get eliminated, just go, you know, a crazy with that. Just, I think that's definitely pumping it up, just pumping, 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 rhythms, all that kind of stuff. I love you. <laughs> I want to wish you all a wonderful, wonderful eternity together.